The story begins with a high school student named Yuji Itadori waking up in a daze strapped in a chair. A blindfolded man, Satoru Gojo, says to him, You don't have time to worry about others because your secret execution has been set. Rewind to the previous day, Yuji is checking on his grandfather as he is demanding Yuji to stay in his school club. That night, a student from Jujutsu Tech, Megumi Fushiguro, is visiting Sugisawa High to find a cursed object. Failing to do so, he calls Satoru Gojo only to be told that he can't return without the object. At Yuji's club with Iguchi and Sasaki, the student council president is threatening to close the occult club due to inactivity. They tell the president that something supernatural is happening that is affecting the students on the rugby field. The president, denying their argument, says the illness is being caused by ticks. Yuji is not actually registered with his occult club which causes the track coach to ask Yuji to help in conquering nationals, and they agree to have a throwing competition. The coach throws an impressive 14 meters, while Yuji casually throws the ball 30 meters, setting a new world record. Meanwhile, Megumi is searching for the cursed object. He sees Yuji dominating and silently acknowledges that he's amazing. Yuji walks past Megumi and he notices cursed energy emanating from Yuji, a possible connection to the cursed object he is looking for. Yuji is rushing to the hospital before Megumi can confront him. In the hospital, Yuji's grandfather is not happy. He is telling Yuji to use his gifts to save others. Shortly after Yuji's grandfather dies, Yuji is filled with sadness. He mourns, packs up his things and is filling out the paperwork. Megumi enters the hospital and confronts him, asks him to hand over the cursed object and reveals the truth about curses. Yuji is handing over the box but it's empty. Yuji is telling him that the object is in the hands of the other occult club members who are planning to remove the seal tonight. Megumi is shocked and Yuji inquires about the severity of removing the seal. Megumi replies saying Yuji's friends are going to die. At Sugisawa High, Sasaki and Iguchi are unwrapping the seal, they find a finger and curses begin to spawn. Upon arriving at school, Yuji is concerned about his friends and Megumi is asking him to stay behind. Sasaki is hiding from the monsters, Iguchi appears beside her but his head is taken over by a small curse. A larger curse attacks Sasaki from behind. Megumi enters and by using his jujutsu he defends himself from the curses summoning his divine dogs and commanding them to feast on the enemies. Meanwhile, Yuji is remembering his grandfather's words about helping others. The number of curses are growing as Megumi and his divine dogs are cutting through them to rescue students. Megumi realizes that he won't make it in time but Yuji crashes in through the window. Yuji rescues the students, allowing Megumi's dogs to devour the curse. Megumi compliments Yuji for his help and Yuji inquires about Megumi's dogs. Turns out they are something called Shikigami. As Megumi is going to capture the cursed object, Ryomen Sukuna's finger, a curse suddenly crashes down. As Megumi pushes Yuji out of the way, a curse captures him. He is attempting to summon another Shikigami, but the curse tosses him out. Due to injury, his divine dogs are dispelled. Before the curse can kill Megumi, Yuji jumps into the fight, but he cannot hurt the curse without cursed energy. Yuji nearly drops the finger into the curse's mouth, but he's able to catch it with his own mouth and eats the savory snack to gain cursed energy. Yuji now has the power of Ryomen Sukuna and kills the curse easily. Megumi beings to worry that Ryomen Sukuna is reborn along with his desire to kill all of humanity. However, Yuji manages to gain control over his body by suppressing Sukuna. Megumi prepares to summon a Shikigami and says he will expel the cursed energy in Yuji Itadori. As he is deciding to exorcise Yuji, Yuji raises his arm saying that he's in control. He says they both need to go to the hospital before Megumi answers. Megumi's sensei Satoru Gojo arrives. Megumi reveals to him that Yuji ate the finger which Gojo is finding hard to believe. Gojo examining Yuji realizes that he has combined with Sukuna. Gojo decides to check Yuji's control asking him to switch to Sukuna for 10 seconds. Megumi holds his Kikufuki, a Sendai specialty and Gojo holds Megumi back while Yuji is allowing Sukuna to take control. Sukuna attacks but Gojo easily dodges all of the attacks. With Megumi watching, Gojo is showing off by hitting several attacks on Sukuna. Sukuna claims that Jujutsu sorcerers are troublesome in every era and tries to finish the fight. Gojo repels the rubble made by Sukuna and counts down the final seconds until Yuji regains control. Gojo decides to knock him out and tells Megumi that if Yuji can wake himself up then he has real potential as a vessel. Megumi knows that Yuji should be executed, 
but Megumi requests to his teacher not to allow that. Gojo promises that he will fulfill his request. Yuji is bound to a chair in a room filled with seals. Gojo explains that according to the decision of elders, Yuji must be executed, but he was able to plead his case and his execution is suspended. Yuji can control Sukuna, therefore, he can be used to consume all 20 delicious fingers of Sukuna. Saturo Gojo presents him with two options. Yuji can either be executed right now or learn to be a Jujutsu sorcerer and consume the 20 fingers and then be executed. Later, Yuji visits Sasaki and Igachi in the hospital. Sasaki blames herself as they are sitting by Iguchi's bed. Despite the doctors believing that Iguchi is in stable condition, he is still unconscious. Yuji, explaining the situation, blames himself for everything. Before leaving, he assures Sasaki that a sorcerer will come to heal Iguchi. Outside the hospital, Yuji meets with Gojo, asking him about the casualties involving curses. Gojo reveals that people are lucky to die a normal death after encountering a curse. The two are traveling to the morgue. Yuji collects his grandfather's ashes and swallows the second finger. Gojo is awaiting as Yuji is struggling with what appears to be Sukuna's influence. However, Yuji is only struggling with the grossness of the finger and proves that he can control Sukuna. Yuji decides that he needs to learn how to fight curses and help obtain all of Sukuna's fingers. Following Yuji's decision, Yuji travels with Gojo to the mountain where the Tokyo Metropolitan Jujutsu Technical School resides. Turns out it is disguised as a religious private school, but it is a base of operations of all Jujutsu sorcerers. Before Yuji can be accepted into school, he has an interview with the principal. As they are walking, Sukuna creates a mouth on Yuji's skin and threatens Gojo, saying that he will kill him after taking over Yuji. Gojo says it's an honor to be targeted by the King of Curses. In a dojo, the principal Masamichi Yaga is creating cute puppets. Yuji introduces himself, and the principal asks why he wants to join Jujutsu Tech. Yaga is not satisfied with Yuji's answers and attacks Yuji by using his cursed puppets to get an acceptable answer. He is doing all of this to make Yuji realize more about himself. The dolls begin a second wave of attacks. While Yaga is asking him again why he wants to enroll in Jujutsu Tech, Yuji, grabbing and holding the doll down with all his strength, explains that he must stop Sukuna if he wants to live a life without regrets. Yaga finds the answer impressive and accepts him into the school. Gojo taking Yuji to his dorm asks him if he is ready to fight. They exit the dorm and find Megumi, who is disappointed that Yuji will be living so close. Gojo reveals that he will take both of them to Mirioka Station tomorrow. They are going to pick up the third first-year student, Nobara Kugisaki. Nobara Kugisaki arrives in Tokyo. She is thinking about someone important to her, Saori. While Megumi and Yuji are waiting for her at the train station in Harajuku, Yuji is wondering why their class is so small, to which Megumi explains that the new student's acceptance was granted a while ago, and Jujutsu students are pretty rare. Gojo arrives, complimenting Yuji on his new uniform. Nobara notices a man scouting out models, and she asks him what he thinks about her. He is scared of her, and she grabs him, telling him to tell her what he really thinks. Yuji thinks she's embarrassing and Gojo calls out for her in his blindfold. She puts her things in a locker and after that she introduces herself and says the boys are lucky to have her as the woman in their group. Yuji and Megumi are introducing themselves to Nobara but she isn't impressed. Gojo explains to them they will take a tour of Tokyo and the group gets excited. But he brings them to an abandoned building close to a cemetery where a curse has taken over. Nobara feels grossed out after learning that Yuji swallowed Sukuna's finger and Gojo reveals to Yuji and Nobara that this is their test. Gojo gives a knife named Slaughter Demon to Yuji and restricts him from using Sukuna's power. He explains that their task is to eliminate all the curses. Yuji and Nobara enter the building. Megumi wants to join them, but Gojo stops him by saying that this test is for Nobara. They head inside and begin the search together. Nobara is ordering Yuji to go downstairs and she will go upstairs, but Yuji disagrees. She storms off by kicking Yuji away. While Yuji is confused by her attitude, a cursed spirit attacks him from above. Acting quickly, he slices apart the curse with his cursed tool. Meanwhile, Gojo believes that Yuji is somewhat crazy, but that in order to become an effective sorcerer, a necessary amount of craziness is required. He is just testing how crazy Nobara is. Nobara comes face to face with a cursed corpse. She pierces the face of the corpse using her hammer and nails. 
The cursed corpse is standing in front of Nobara, but its head is destroyed by Nobara's nails as cursed energy flows through them. Nobara finds a small child hiding. The boy refuses to come out and Nobara notices another curse. The curse shows his intelligence by taking the boy hostage. Nobara weighs her options and thinks she should be the one to survive and sacrifice the boy, but instead tries to protect the boy by surrendering. In what she thinks are her final moments, she thinks of her friend Saori. Sudden while I, Yuji punches down the wall and frees the boy by cutting off the arm of the curse. The curse attempts to flee, but Nobara uses her straw doll technique on the severed arm and exorcises the curse. Nobara then reveals that her friend Saori was outcast by the people of her village because she came from Tokyo. She wants to get back at those people. That's why she enrolled in Jujutsu Tech so she could come to Tokyo. Yuji, despite being confused, accepts her motivation. She hopes to meet Saori again. Nobara thanks Yuji for his help. They return the boy to his home and Gojo offers them dinner as their reward. Nobara orders Yuji to get her things from her coin locker in Harajuku. Yuji refuses, but Nobara continues to yell at him. Yuji looks at Megumi for backup, but he's too busy on his phone. During the next month, the three Jujutsu students are called out to exorcise a cursed womb, but one of them dies in the said event. Kiyotaka Ijichi brings the first year's Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara to a detention center where a cursed womb has been spotted. The five detainees remaining inside Detainee Block 2 can potentially spawn a special grade cursed spirit. Upon Yuji asking about the special grade, Ijichi warns them about what to do when encountering a special grade. They have only two options, either run or die. Their mission is to rescue the survivors. A distraught mother is asking them to save their son. Yuji says that they must save everyone. Ijichi is casting a curtain barrier, concealing them from the outside world, while Megumi summons his divine dogs to warn them when a curse approaches. They enter inside a curse's domain, Yuji and Nobara are panicking, but Megumi is confident that his divine dogs will smell any threats. They move and find bodies trapped inside. Among them, Yuji finds Tadashi, the son of the distressed woman. He wants to bring him outside, but Megumi refuses and says that he is a detainee in this juvenile detention center. He doesn't need to be saved. Yuji counters him and asks Megumi why he saved him in the first place. Nobara yells at both of them to stop, but suddenly gets dragged by the curse. Megumi is confused, wondering why his divine dogs didn't sense the threat, and he realizes that his dogs have been killed. Megumi says they need to run, but the special cursed spirit appears in front of them. Both of them are paralyzed by fear, but Yuji attacks the spirit with his knife. He loses his hand, and the knife is now broken. Meanwhile, Nobara is surrounded by masks in a strange area. Megumi flees the area looking for Nobara using Nue. Before Megumi ran away, Yuji asked for Sukuna's help, telling Megumi he will distract the cursed spirit until they make it out. Megumi is shocked by the powers of the special grade cursed spirit and listens to Yuji. Megumi is rushing to find her with his other divine dogs while Yuji is getting punished by the enemy. He can't hold back the spirit's surge of energy, he's too weak. Elsewhere, Megumi is able to save Nobara just before she was about to be devoured by the curses. Yuji realizes that he will not have a proper death and about to die. He begins to cry. This makes him realize that he can use his negative feelings on his fist. He charges toward the spirit with a fist reinforced by cursed energy and strikes it. The special grade catches Yuji's punch, but he was able to buy enough time for Megumi to escape with Nobara. The divine dog howls, signaling to Yuji that he can unleash Sukuna. Megumi stays outside with Ijichi and asks him to bring back a grade 1 sorcerer to help, and he will stay here to deal with Yuji if Sukuna's rampage lasts too long. Sukuna takes control over Yuji's body and thinks about the best way to get back at Yuji. He decides to put the situation back to the way it was, but the special grade, refusing to work with him, attacks him. Sukuna stops his attack while healing Yuji's arm, and believes that the curse has chosen its death. Sukuna overpowers him and put an end to any ideas of it getting proud of itself. He shows both Yuji and the curse what real Jujutsu is by activating his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, and slices the curse into pieces, allowing Sukuna to take back his finger which had spawned the cursed womb. Sukuna is irritated that he's been used by Yuji. He demands Yuji to take back control, but he doesn't answer. Sukuna laughs in an evil manner, realizing that Yuji can't switch back. Megumi notices that the cursed womb's innate domain has disappeared. He is waiting for Yuji, 
but Sukuna arrives to tell him that this won't be happening. Sukuna blames Yuji for overusing his powers. He also says that Yuji cannot switch back, and in order to prevent him from taking control, he rips out Yuji's heart. Sukuna now has full control over the body, and switching back will result in death. Sukuna eats another one of his fingers to strengthen his control. He prepares to kill Megumi. Megumi says to Sukuna that Yuji will switch back even if it means taking his own life. Sukuna argues by saying that Yuji is just a coward. Megumi, ignoring his words, notices that Sukuna can use the reverse cursed technique since his arm is healed. He plans to fight Sukuna believing that he is weaker without a heart, and can force Sukuna to heal Yuji's heart. Megumi begins by summoning his Nue and engaging in close combat with Sukuna. Sukuna plays with Megumi until Megumi unleashes Orochi and lifts him into the air where Nue strikes him repeatedly. Sukuna destroys the Great Serpent and by using the open space he throws Megumi without using any kind of power or jujutsu. Sukuna is overpowering him and Megumi is forced to release his Nue. Sukuna is quite impressed by Megumi's techniques. Sukuna asks him why he chose to run instead of standing against the cursed womb. Megumi recalls how his sister was treated unfairly and how his father left him. Megumi doesn't believe in karma and nobody gets to enjoy true fairness. Therefore, that is why Megumi will save people unequally based on his own convictions. Megumi saved Yuji because he didn't want to see a good person die and believes that he's a sorcerer, not a hero, finishing their conversation from before. Yuji listens to Megumi from inside and takes back control of his body. Blood pours out of Yuji's chest and Yuji collapses due to his wounds and tells his friend to live a long life. In Tokyo, four mysterious figures are walking and discussing why one of the sorcerers used a Sukuna finger to test Sukuna's strength. They were the ones who spawned the special grade curse. They stroll into a cafe where everyone only sees the man despite the cursed company he has. Meanwhile, Gojo meets with Ijichi in the school morgue. Gojo believes that Yuji was set up by the higher-ups and they purposely sent Sukuna's vessel on a dangerous mission. Gojo is feeling irritated and threatens to kill all the higher-ups. A school doctor, Shoko Leiri, arrives and is surprised to see Gojo so emotional. She asks permission to dissect Yuji's body and Gojo asks her to make good use of him. Megumi and Nobara, saddened by Yuji's death, are sitting on the stairs together. The second-year Jujutsu students arrive and find them sulking. Maki asks why they're looking so glum, but Panda reveals to her that their classmate died, and now she thinks she came off as cold-hearted. Panda says that's exactly how she came off, and Toge says Tuna and Mayo. Megumi introduces them as Maki Zenin, Toge Inumaki and Panda. Megumi mentions another second year named Yuta Okotsu, but he's studying overseas. Nobara is annoyed that he doesn't add more about the Panda named Panda. Panda apologizes for Maki's rudeness, and asks that they participate in the Kyoto Sister School Exchange event. Since the third-year students are suspended, Tokyo High needs more participants. The second year's explains that this event is a battle between schools where sorcerers fight against one another. In order to get stronger for Yuji, both the first years agree to participate. Elsewhere, the unknown sorcerer and cursed spirits are meeting. The curses explain that they want to gain the dominant position the humans have, they're asking how they can defeat Jujutsu sorcerers. The man says, In order to go to war, they need to render Satoru Gojo unable to fight and make Sukuna their ally. The curses believe that Yuji is dead, but the sorcerer is not sure. Somewhere inside the residuals of Yuji's soul, Sukuna is looking down on him. Sukuna is pleased with himself and sits atop a mountain of skulls, telling Yuji not to look up without permission. Yuji replies that Sukuna should come down. Yuji begins fighting against Sukuna but is quickly overwhelmed. Sukuna explains to him that they are in a suspended state of existence within Sukuna's mind. Sukuna wants to make a deal with Yuji to fix his heart and places two conditions. The first condition is he can use his body after using a key phrase, and the second is Yuji will forget about this conversation. Yuji refuses to lend his body but Sukuna promises to not hurt anyone. Yuji does not believe that Sukuna will fulfill his side of the deal. Sukuna further explains, saying a promise made with Jujutsu cannot be broken or else Sukuna will be punished. Yuji refuses and demands him to bring him back to life without any conditions. Sukuna offers a fight to the death to decide which way Yuji will come back to life. Yuji agrees and Sukuna instantly bisects Yuji's head. Gojo meets Ijichi and says he's not a good teacher. However, to change the broken foundations of the Jujutsu community, 
he wants to train strong allies to fight against the curses in the future. He believes students like the second year Okotsu and the third year Hikari have enough potential. Gojo feels the loss of Yuji as he had the potential to be on par with Gojo himself. As Shoko is preparing to dissect Yuji's body, he suddenly comes back to life. Gojo is happy to see him and wholesomely high-fives him. Gojo asks Shoko to leave Yuji deceased on record to avoid anyone making an attempt to kill him again. Gojo plans to train Yuji privately to get him ready for the exchange event. In a diner where the mysterious sorcerer, Suguru Geto, and the cursed spirits are, a waiter senses a dangerous presence. The volcano-cursed spirit Jogo wants to know what would happen if his team of curses tries to kill Gojo. Geto believes that Gojo will exercise all of them. He recommends that they use a special-grade cursed object, Prison Realm, in order to seal him, not kill him. Jogo feels excited. The waiter, sensing the danger, quits his job and flees instantly. His boss greets Geto for his order but catches fire instantly. Within a few seconds, everyone else catches fire as well. Jogo claims that he will take Prison Realm for himself and will kill Gojo in return. At Jujutsu High, Megumi arrives to train with other students. He and Nobara are training to get better at close combat, while Gojo trains Yuji to control his cursed energy. Gojo explains the differences between cursed energy and a cursed technique by using cans. The first can is blasted with pure cursed energy while the second is twisted by using a cursed technique. Yuji believes that he's about to learn a cursed technique but this is not possible as sorcerers are born with innate techniques. Gojo wants to improve Yuji's fighting style with Jujutsu by having him channel cursed energy into his fists. Yuji believes that he succeeded in it in his last fight but he is not able to show it. Gojo explains to him that it is important for sorcerers to control their negative emotions. To teach this, Gojo is going to have Yuji watch movies. His training involves pouring just enough cursed energy into another one of the principal's dolls while watching the movies. If Yuji doesn't fill the cursed corpse with energy, it will attack him. As movies are meant to draw out all kinds of emotions, his goal is to maintain the steady flow of cursed energy. Back at school, Megumi asks Maki how he can use weapons alongside his cursed technique. He is thinking about his exchange with Sukuna, which makes him realize that he can keep cursed tools within his own shadow. Meanwhile, Nobara is shopping for a new tracksuit, and Yuji is still watching movies. Gojo reminds him to focus harder before leaving to meet the principal of Kyoto Jujutsu High. Gojo asks him if he spoke with Sukuna, but Yuji doesn't remember. Ijichi drives Gojo toward Kyoto. Gojo notices a disturbance and gets out of the car, telling Ijichi to drive off alone. Gojo stays in the middle of the freeway until Jogo crashes down in front of him. Gojo dodges and casually asks who he is but Jogo creates a volcano that blasts Satoru with a volcanic explosion from behind. Jogo believes that Gojo is dead, and that it was so easy to get rid of him. However, he is shocked to see that the volcanic explosion didn't even scratch Gojo. The sorcerer warns him by asking him if he really thought it would be that easy, and that he copied his name. He then swiftly wipes away the ash and fire around him. Gojo is quite surprised to meet a curse that is able to communicate clearly, and he believes that Jogo currently surpasses Sukuna, meaning that this Jogo is an unregistered special grade curse. Satoru tells Jogo that special grades cannot keep popping out of nowhere or it ruins their rank. He means that special grades are supposed to be rare, and if they keep popping out of nowhere, their rank loses value and doesn't make them as fearsome. The cursed spirit suggests that Gojo is giving up, but he doesn't know that Gojo is just getting started. He was just toying with the curse. Satoru realizes that Jogo chose to attack away from a populated area so that other sorcerers cannot back him up. Jogo uses ember insects to attack the sorcerer, but Gojo stops them as they are about to reach him. He wonders what might happen if the insects touch him. Gojo hears a sound and insects begin to explode. Gojo is easily able to avoid them, but he appreciates this two-step attack. However, Jogo acts quickly and strikes Gojo with two more flaming attacks and kicks him in the stomach. Once again, Jogo believes that he has won the battle, but he realizes that none of his attacks had an effect on the sorcerer. Jogo is confused and asks what's happening. Since none of his attacks are working, he is feeling quite anxious and frustrated. Gojo says that he was not able to touch him. Jogo believes that he touched him and felt it. Gojo states that he was only able to touch the infinity that exists between them, showing him that their hands can't touch no matter how much the curse power pushes him forward. Gojo begins to taunt him by holding his hands like a boy and a girl about to make love. 
Gojo then pummels Jogo with his Jujutsu and finishes his combo of attacks by unleashing the divergence and convergence of the Infinity Curse Technique Reversal, Red. This high-energy attack sends Jogo tumbling through the forest where Gojo continues to attack him before kicking him into a nearby lake. Jogo recalls that Geto, the sorcerer from the diner, was right when he said Jogo would die if he tried to kill Gojo. Suddenly, Gojo disappears from the lake. Gojo decides to bring Yuji to the battlefield so he can learn about the pinnacle of Jujutsu battles, domain expansion. Yuji is Sukuna's vessel, the strongest curse in the world. He teleports to Yuji and brings him to Jogo's location. Jogo has no idea where Yuji came from, but realizes that Sukuna's vessel is really alive, just as Geto predicted. Gojo explains to the curse that his student will be watching in order to learn from this fight. Jogo suggests the sorcerer is a fool for bringing someone who would hold him back, but Gojo mocks him by saying that this won't matter because the curse is too weak. After all, he was not able to even touch Gojo despite his efforts, Jogo is enraged and spews flames from each of the volcanic holes on his head. It looks like Jogo is going to use all of his power, and Yuji is scared, wondering if this curse is more powerful than any of the monsters he has ever encountered. But Gojo assures him that he will be okay as long as he stays close. Jogo activates his domain expansion, trapping the sorcerers inside the coffin of the Iron Mountain. Domain expansion enhances the user's abilities, and inspires the user's innate techniques as well. The abilities used within a domain expansion always hit their target. Gojo explains that the automatic hit within a domain expansion can be repelled by countering with a cursed technique or by escaping the domain, but neither of these methods is recommended. You might try to run away and get hit in the back. Jogo knows that this technique will diminish the infinity protection of Gojo. The curse is not happy because he was outsmarted and looked down on by a human despite his strength. At the same time, Gojo tells Yuji that the most effective way to counter domain expansion is by casting a domain themselves. Jogo attempts to attack Gojo, but Gojo activates domain expansion, unlimited void which traps Jogo in a space that feeds him all of the information in the universe at once, therefore paralyzing him. Jogo is immobilized, so Gojo decapitates him and dispels the barrier. He attempts to interrogate Jogo to get information about him and who sent him. Meanwhile, Geto and Hanami are watching them from afar. Geto can't afford to be seen, so he leaves Hanami to handle the situation alone. Before Gojo is able to get information from the curse or exercise him, a plant pierces the ground near Gojo and spawns a field of flowers. This distracts Yuji and Gojo. The distraction is long enough for a wooden monster to attack Gojo. The small gap in time allows Hanami to grab Jogo's head and disappear completely. Gojo is impressed with his ability to hide his presence. Yuji apologizes for letting them get away so easily, and Gojo replies that he wants all of his students and Yuji to become so strong that they are able to exorcise such powerful curses. Yuji is concerned about this, but Satoru says he's so glad he brought him since Yuji now has a concrete goal. Yuji is still concerned and says he still doesn't even understand what was going on and wonders, is this guy serious? Gojo decides that he will speed up Yuji's training. Yuji will train with Gojo and go on several harder missions to prepare for the upcoming exchange event. Yuji then raises his hand and asks what the exchange event is. Because he was dead when the exchange event was discussed and Satoru forgot to tell him. Back at the school, Principal Yaga is not happy with Ijichi because Gojo is late for their meeting. Meanwhile, Geto returns to the curse's hideout. It is a domain hidden behind an apartment door. He meets up with the leaders and Mahito asks about Jogo. Hanami then walks in holding Jogo's head. Mahito says he's happy that they are safe. Geto tells Jogo that they will carry out Gojo's ceiling on October 31st in Shibuya. Mahito agrees with him and says that they must be cunning about it. Somewhere on the Tokyo Jujutsu high grounds, the first-year students Megumi and Nobara run errands for the second-year Maki Zenin. In another area, the second-year students Panda, Maki and Toge Inumaki are having a discussion. Panda is worried about the meeting with the Kyoto school's principal. Maki believes that the principal won't pull anything out of the blue, but that's not what Panda is worried about. He is worried because he may have brought students that may try to pick a fight with the first years. At the vending machines, Aoi Todo and Mai Zainin confront Megumi and Nobara. They arrive and claim they're checking on them since their classmate died. Mai begins to taunt them and mocks their dead friend Yuji, which irritates both of the first years. 
AOI is not interested in this at all, and claims he only came here to confirm whether the Yuta Okotsu's replacements will be entertaining. Todo takes his shirt off and asks Megumi what kind of girls he likes, and claims depending on the answer, he'll beat him half to death. Todo admirably declares that his type of woman is tall with a big butt. Megumi doesn't want to discuss his taste in women with a man he just met, and Nobara says that it's too hard for an introvert like Megumi to discuss such things. Todo believes the kinds of women a person likes says a lot about them. If they don't have good taste, then they're boring people, and Todo doesn't like boring people. He looks forward to the goodwill event, and he can't accept that it might turn out boring. He demands an answer from Megumi. Megumi has a flashback of his sister and says that as long as a person is compassionate, then he doesn't need anything else. He wants to avoid the fight, but the rock is not satisfied with his answer. He tells Megumi that he's boring and immediately attacks him. Nobara wants to help Megumi, but Mai holds her back by wrapping her arms around her from behind. Mai claims that Megumi won't stand a chance against Todo. Nobara claims that even though Maki and Mai are sisters, Mai is less attractive, which angers Mai. Todo hits Megumi all the way outside and says that the boy has trampled all over his kindness. Megumi recognizes Aoi Todo's name for being the sorcerer who exercised all the curses in the night parade of a hundred demons from Shinjuku to Kyoto. Megumi also remembers that he didn't use any of his innate techniques to defeat five grade one and one special grade curse. Todo denies this rumor and reveals that he did use his innate technique against the special grade, shocking Megumi. Megumi is bleeding and combines Nue with his toads to create winged toads from his bottomless well technique. However, Todo easily counters this technique and brutalizes Megumi with his pure force. The toads were able to slow him down, but it wasn't enough. After being brutally punished, Megumi stands up and says that while he had no intention to fight, he'll show him what he's capable of. Todo runs towards Megumi with full force, and as Megumi is about to use his other technique, Panda and Togi arrive. Toad uses his cursed speech to slow down Todo while Pando punches him backwards and saves Megumi. Panda tells him to leave before he decides to scream, no. Before taking off, Todo tells the second years to give Yuta Okotsu a message. He wants Yuta to take part in the exchange event. Yuta is also a second year student at Jujutsu High. Meanwhile, Nobara is on the ground after being shot by Mai. Mai tells her that she should pick her fights better. Maki arrives to help and the two sisters begin to argue. Nobara gets up and attacks Mai using Maki as a distraction. Nobara demands that Mai hand over her summer uniform, but Todo arrives and tells Mai that they are leaving. She says that she's just getting started, but Todo wants to go because he has tickets to shake the hand of his favorite pop star, Takada-chan. As they leave, Mai says to Nobara, you won't get off this easy at the exchange event. Nobara and Maki walk together and talk about Maki being unable to use cursed energy, which is why she uses cursed tools. She's also unable to see cursed energy. Her glasses allow her to see it. Nobara remembers that's why Yuji was also given a cursed tool. Nobara asks Maki why she wants to become a sorcerer if she can't use or see cursed energy, and she tells her that her family was used to belittle her because she wasn't able to use curse energy. She wants to become a great sorcerer to spite her family of gifted sorcerers. Elsewhere, Gojo arrives to meet with Principal Gakuganj from Kyoto. Gojo thanks him for the other day, and the principal acts confused. Gojo then tells him he is referring to the Yuji Itadori incident, in which the student who happens to be Sukuna's vessel died. The principal claims to have no idea what he's talking about, and Gojo tells the old man to stop playing dumb. He believes that the principal is the head of the conservative group of sorcerers, and that he was involved in setting up the trap. While Gojo is disrespecting the principal, Kasumi Miwa, a student nearby, urges Gojo to mind his manners and says she will report him. He doesn't mind, and she excitedly blushes because Gojo spoke to her. Gojo reveals to the principal that he was attacked by two unregistered special grade curses. The principal doesn't care, and Gojo tells him not to get him wrong. It was like getting coerced into taking a tour of Tokyo, an easy task but annoying. Gojo explains that between Todo, Yuta Okotsu, and Yuji, Sukuna's vessel, there is a new wave of power that has grown bigger than the conservatives can handle. Soon they won't be able to measure the coming age of sorcerers and curses with special grade. The principal tells him that Gojo is getting out of line, but he brushes it off and tells him that's all he wanted to say and leaves. But then he re-enters and says that the principal of Tokyo Jujutsu High, Principal Yaga, 
won't be arriving for another two hours. Gakuganj asks Miwa for tea, but instead she runs off to get a picture with Gojo. Meanwhile, at Takada-chan's personal handshake event, Toda receives a handshake from his favorite pop star and asks her for a Takatan beam. He is frozen in awe and is taken away. A month later, three heavy corpses are found in the Kinema Cinema Movie Theater. Mahito, one of the curses plotting to seal Gojo, is waiting in an alley. A young man comes and asks, How did you do it? And Mahito is shocked. He replies and says, Wow, you're able to see me. And the next day, Yuji and another sorcerer approach the movie theater to investigate. Prior to Yuji's mission, a young student is getting bullied by his classmates at Satozakura High. His name is Junpei Yoshino. A student claims that Junpei was staring at their girlfriend's chest. Junpei doesn't want to get in a fight, so he accepts being bullied. But secretly he fantasizes that if he had a button that could kill everyone who hates him, he would push it without any hesitation. Later that day, Junpei skips his school to see Human Earthworm 3 at the movie theater. Unfortunately, the students that bullied him at school also happened to be there. Junpei recalls when he was bullied for looking at a girl's chest and he claimed that she is only using them for attention, and they listen because they want to hook up with her. When he points this out, the bullies beat him harder. The truth always hurts. The students are talking loudly in the theater which annoys Junpei. Suddenly, Mahito, a cursed spirit, comes in and kills all of the bullies for making too much noise in the theater. Junpei walks down to investigate what happened to them, and he sees they have become monster corpses. He immediately leaves the theater and begins to track down Mahito. Junpei finds him in an alleyway and believes he is not a human. When he catches up to him, Junpei asks Mahito if there is any way he could do the things that he does. Back in the theater, the authorities hand over the investigation to Jujutsu sorcerers. Yuji and Grade 1 sorcerer Kento Nanami are investigating the theater. Nanami points out that when a cursed technique is used, the residuals are always left behind, but Yuji is not able to see it. Nanami tells him to focus. Yuji takes a moment and begins to see them after focusing. Nanami says a good sorcerer can sense it even before seeing it, and so he doesn't praise Yuji for being able to see them. Yuji is humiliated for not being able to sense it in the first place. Yuji suggests that they go all out, but Nanami argues there is no need to go all out. A moderate effort will be enough, which makes Yuji feel as though they're not getting along so far. Yuji recalls that Satoru trusted Yuji's training on this mission to his dear friend Nanami, the ex-banker sorcerer. Nanami believes that sorcerers are horrible, but working for a company is equally bad. Nanami has absolute trust in Gojo, but he doesn't respect him because he constantly breaks the rules and regulations. However, Nanami does not view Yuji as a full-fledged sorcerer. In the theater, Yuji and Nanami are following the residuals to the roof of the building. As they walk outside in the rain, a cursed spirit appears. Another one appears shortly after, so Nanami suggests that they should fight each cursed spirit separately. Yuji wants to show Nanami his abilities, so that his teacher doesn't underestimate him. But Nanami feels that he is a child, and he still requires guidance and protection. Nanami tells Yuji, You have faced several life-or-death situations, but it doesn't make you an adult. It is the losses that build up throughout life that make people grow into adults. Nanami fights the curse and divulges how his cursed technique works out loud. He explains that his technique allows him to forcibly create a weak point on any opponent and cause a critical hit. Yuji then says, are you talking to me? But Nanami ignores him and continues explaining while fighting. Nanami teaches Yuji that revealing one's technique gives an advantage in a battle. It increases the effectiveness of one's abilities in battle. Nanami shows him by attacking the creature with a single slash of his sword. Yuji is now able to focus on his opponent as Nanami is finished speaking. Yuji shows off what he learned during his training. He is able to channel cursed energy effectively into his fists. During the training, Gojo taught Yuju that his cursed energy has a time lag, which allows him to turn one strike into two impacts. Yuji brings down his opponent by using his attack divergent fist. Nanami is quite impressed with his technique and admits that he can see what Gojo sees in Yuji. He silently appreciates Yuji and his room for growth. Nanami prepares to finish them off, but notices something suspicious. He takes a picture and shows it to Yuji. Yuji says the cursed spirit doesn't appear in photos and asks him why they are appearing. Nanami believes these creatures are not curses. 
He brings the curses to Shoko Ieri who confirms that they are ex-humans who were mutated by a cursed technique in the same way the victims at the theater were. Shoko assures Yuji that they are not alive and he shouldn't feel guilty about ending their existence. Yuji is enraged that so many people lost their lives and Nanami is surprised to see his genuine feelings. Nanami decides to cheer him up. He reveals that their target manipulated the residuals to lead them into that trap, so now they'll have to use maximum effort to find the curse. And Yuji is ready. Meanwhile, Mahito takes Junpei to his hideout. He teaches him how curses manifest from the fears of humans. Humans not only fear yokai legends, but also natural disasters, which is why so many curses appear after a disaster. Mahito is born from the hatred that humans feel for each other. Meanwhile, Nanami explains to Yuji that he was able to find their target's hideout. However, he wants Yuji to follow the lead on Junpei, the only witness of the crime that happened in the theater. Yuji is joined by Yajichi while Nanami investigates the hideout. Yuji realizes that he hasn't met another assistant besides Yajichi, and assistant Yajichi explains that he's the only one who knows he's alive. Yuji is about to leave and tells his teacher to be careful, and Nanami tells Yuji to stop calling him sensei. Yuji says he will call him Nanami, and Nanami says he will slap him. Earlier that day, Junpei is at his movie club at Satozakura High School with his ultra nerds. They're discussing the intricacies of various movies. Suddenly they're interrupted by a few bullies who claim that this room is only for them to use. They demand Junpei and Team Nerd to leave, but as they are about to walk out, Junpei stops and tells the overgrown high schooler that he is stepping on his DVD and demands that he moves his foot. His friends tell him to let it go, as they are scared of the bullies. This irritates the bully and he kicks Junpei across the room. Junpei's friends run away in fear and the bully approaches Junpei. The bully smirks and orders his meatheads to shut the door and they begin to beat up Junpei. Later that day, Junpei meets with Mahito in the sewer, and the two discuss the difference between love and hate. After their conversation, Mahito shows him a few of his experiments and tells him he can change people's forms by using his cursed technique. He shows Junpei how large and small he can make human bodies. Junpei holds the small human nugget and isn't shocked at all, which surprises Mahito. But Junpei knows how repulsive human beings can be, so he is indifferent to holding the mini football. Mahito explains that human beings don't have hearts, which surprises Junpei. He continues saying that human beings have a soul at their core, not a heart. He also believes that there is no value or purpose to life, because life continuously flows like a cycle. Mahito explains that Junpei doesn't have to put an end to his hatred because the two of them can do whatever they want, and if he likes, Junpei can kill whoever he wants and take a dump wherever he wants. Later that day, Junpei is walking in the street and Yuji and Ijichi spot him as they drive slowly behind him. Yuji asks Ijichi how his classmates are doing and simultaneously at Jujutsu High, Nobara is getting punished by Panda. Ijichi says that from what he hears, they're doing quite well. Ijichi gives Yuji his assignment. He has to use a weak cursed spirit known as Flyheads to test Junpei's talent for Jujutsu and his possible connection to the theater incident. They devise four plans and depending upon the outcome of their test using the Flyhead, they will know how to deal with Junpei. Option 1. If Junpei is not able to see the curse, Yuji will catch the Flyhead and save him. 2. If Junpei is able to see it but doesn't attack, Yuji will still catch the Flyhead and then question Junpei. Option 3. If Junpei attacks the Flyhead, Yuji will restrain Junpei using force and question him. However, if Junpei's powers are equal to a grade 2 sorcerer, then they will retreat. Yuji thinks he can handle a grade 2 sorcerer, but Ijichi explains that grade 2 sorcerers have equal power to a grade 1 curse. Therefore, according to the rules, Yuji should only be allowed to challenge grade 3 sorcerers. Yuji wonders why he wasn't told that before and Ijichi thinks to himself that it's because his teacher, Satoru Gojo, is a moron. While this is occurring, Nanami enters Mahito's underground hideout and casually says, If you're planning to come out, please hurry up and do so. Mahito appears out of the darkness and says he's quite happy that it's him and not Satoru Gojo. Nanami replies that he wants to get this over quickly because he has been working since 10 in the morning and doesn't like to work overtime. They begin to fight, and Nanami notices that Mahito has similarities to Gojo. They share a textbook superficiality with dark strength behind it. Nanami is able to break Mahito's arm with his technique, catching him off guard. Mahito is amazed to see that Nanami actually hit him since he blocked it with cursed energy, but he isn't too worried about it. While Mahito is talking, Nanami realizes that this special grade curse spirit can speak quite well, and must be connected to the special grade curse that Gojo fought. 
Mahito asks Nanami if the body or the soul came first. Nanami says the body, but Mahito claims that the soul exists before the body and the soul shapes the body. By changing the shape of his own soul and others, he can change their form using his innate technique, idle transfiguration. Nanami looks at his watch and says it is 5.30. Since he started at 10 in the morning, he says he will be quitting at 6 no matter what it takes. Meanwhile, Junpei walks past his overweight teacher, Sotomura, sitting outside. He says he shouldn't be skipping school and asks him if he heard about his friends that were killed at the movies, meaning the bullies. Junpei can't believe how stupid he is. He remembers Mahito's words and nearly attacks him. But Yuji suddenly appears, catching the fly head that Ijichi released on accident, not knowing that there was a teacher there. Yuji realizes that Junpei can see the cursed spirit and wants to talk to Junpei, but Sotomura keeps on interfering. As the teacher is yelling, Yuji decides to pants him and runs away with his pants. Sotomura runs behind him, and Yuji appears from the back of the street two seconds later and Junpei is shocked. He asks him if he already ran around the block and Yuji says, yeah. Junpei asks him why Yuji didn't just drag him off and Yuji says it's because he could tell Junpei didn't like that man. Junpei is pleasantly surprised and agrees to go on a walk with Yuji. Meanwhile, Nanami and Mahito continue to battle underground. Nanami manages to dodge all of the transfigured humans that Mahito uses. One of the transfigured humans speaks to Nanami and says, help me. Nanami recalls the words of the Chujutsu doctor, and Mahito says that he's been trying not to make his toys die right away, but to not let it worry him. Nanami replies and says that it doesn't bother him, he doesn't bring personal feelings to his workplace. Mahito denies it, saying you suck at lying. Mahito then asks him what grade he is, and Nanami tells him that he is a grade 1 sorcerer. Mahito says that Nanami will make a perfect test subject and dashes toward him, taking Nanami off guard in an attempt to reshape his soul. Nanami manages to protect himself by using cursed energy. Nanami is injured but not transfigured. Mahito says, I know Jujutsu sorcerers use cursed energy to protect themselves from being attacked, but a few more hits will be enough to cease your existence as a human. Nanami flees down the sewer tunnel to stall and looks at his watch. Mahito says, It looks like you are almost out of time. Nanami is annoyed and tells Mahito that thanks to him he has to work overtime. Nanami's cursed energy suddenly begins to increase, surprising Mahito. Mahito realizes that he has used a time-based technique to limit his energy in order to increase his power once he goes into overtime. Nanami rushes at Mahito, deciding that he has two options. He can continue to attack Mahito until he runs out of his cursed energy but decides that this is dangerous and not sustainable. This means he will go with option number two and attempt to crush him with one blow by using his full force. Nanami then strikes one of the walls by using his ratio technique, Collapse. The curse technique is so powerful that Nanami's punch breaks the wall with a shockwave of his cursed energy. Mahito is in awe and decides that it's a good idea to avoid this attack but suddenly Nanami cuts his leg off. The sorcerer then tells Mahito that he's retreating and if Mahito manages to stay alive they will fight again someday. Mahito is confused but shortly after the rocks from the wall land on him and crush him. Meanwhile, Yuji is with Junpei sitting outside on a set of stairs close to a river. Junpei asks if the ground had shaken and thinks it's an earthquake. Yuji tries to contact Ijichi, but he's busy trying to catch the other flyhead. The pants bandit wonders if it's okay to reveal things about the Jujutsu world to Junpei. Junpei then notices the swirly button on his uniform and recalls Mahito telling him that if he ever meets someone with such a swirly button, that person is a Jujutsu sorcerer and he should act friendly with him. But he's confused because the sorcerers are Mahito's enemies. Yuji decides to be straightforward with Junpei and asks him about what happened at the movie theatre. Junpei denies this by saying he didn't see anything and has only been able to see curses recently. Yuji immediately believes him and asks if it's okay if he sticks around until Ijichi shows up. He sits down with Junpei and asks what movie was playing. Junpei tells him and Yuji says that the movie sucked and that he got punched so many times while watching which confuses Junpei. Geto watches them from above and is satisfied that they made a link with Yuji. The boys realize they have similar tastes when suddenly, Junpei's mother, Nagi Yoshino arrives, meets with them, and invites Yuji to dinner. Geto travels underground to find Mahito. He is impressed by the state Nanami left things in. Mahito comes out from the rubble, happy to have learned much more about himself from the battle. Meanwhile, Ijichi is finally able to catch the flyhead and calls Yuji, but he says he is having dinner with Junpei and hangs up. He is worried that the adult of the adults will find out that he left Yuji out with Junpei. Suddenly, Nanami calls him and asks him to drive him to Jujutsu High so his wounds can be treated. Ijichi freaks out, 
and tells him he will pick him up as he picks up Yuji. Nanami is angry that he's not with Yuji and Ijichi realizes that he shouldn't have said that. While Ijichi is on his way, Nanami thinks to himself that Mahito is dangerous. He is a young cursed spirit and is learning more and more about what he is capable of. At Junpei's house, Yuji and Junpei are getting along quite well. They talk and eat, and Yuji makes them laugh until Junpei's mother falls asleep from drinking too much. Junpei remembers how his mother once let him skip school and told him that there's a whole world out there. School is just an aquarium. He smiles at his fondness of his mom and asks Yuji about his mom. Yuji says he never really knew her and that he only has a few memories of his dad. Junpei is sad upon hearing this when Ijichi calls Yuji and tells him he's here to pick him up. Before Yuji leaves, Junpei asks him if he is a jujutsu sorcerer and what he would do if he were forced to kill someone. Yuji tells him that he is, and says that no matter how much bad a person has done, he would not try to kill them, because then the value of life would become even more unclear to Yuji. As he leaves, Junpei thinks about how people don't have hearts, but there are also good people in this world like Yuji and his mother. So if killing someone means tainting his soul, he will never kill anyone. That night, Junpei's mother wakes up at her dining room table and finds one of Sukuna's fingers, which draws a curse to her and ends her life. Nanami explains what happened to Yuji, and Yuji is furious. Nanami prepares to make a move on Mahito, but Nanami doesn't want Yuji to be forced into killing transfigured humans. Yuji angrily tells Nanani that he thinks Yuji would just get in his way. Yuji doesn't want his partner to die, but Nanami just asks him to continue trailing Junpei, as Mahito is trying to mislead the boy. Back at Junpei's house, Mahito feeds hatred into Junpei's broken heart and points the blame towards Shota, the student that bullied Junpei at school. Mahito hints that he planted the finger in Junpei's house to curse him. Later that day, Junpei returns to school filled with hatred, vowing that everyone will know what real pain is. Mahito and Geto are watching from a distance as Mahito casts a curtain over the school. Their plan is to leverage Yuji into making a binding vow with Sukuna using Junpei. They were the ones that placed Sukuna's finger at Junpei's home in the first place. Mahito asks Geto if he's okay with leaving the finger, and Geto explains that it's all a part of his plan and wants Jujutsu High to find the finger. As Geto leaves, Junpei enters the auditorium and all of the students are passed out except Shota and Junpei's teacher, Sotomura. Junpei asks Shota if he's the one who put the finger in his home, but Shota has no idea what he's talking about. Junpei uses his Jujutsu to poison Shota's skin and asks him if he's an idiot for answering his question with his own question. And Shoto asks what makes him think he can answer his question with a question about the question that he just questioned. As Junpei is about to kill him, Yuji enters the auditorium and yells at Junpei to stop, but Junpei only tells him to back off. Yuji chases Junpei and attacks his jellyfish, Shikigami Moondregs. It absorbs the impact of Yuji's punches and protects Junpei as he hides inside of it. Junpei continues to tell him to stay out of it and says that people don't have hearts. Squidward then tries to bind Yuji with its tentacles. Junpei learned Jujutsu from Mahito. He taught him how to summon Shikigami with a poised cursed technique so that he can control his cursed energy. Yuji reaches out of the mass of jellyfish and grabs Junpei from behind. He runs away but Yuji punches the Shikigami into Junpei, throwing them out of the window. Outside, as Junpei recovers, he remembers his mother and tells Yuji to stop interfering. Yuji jumps down and the jellyfish tries to use its stingers to pierce him, but he counters and punches Junpei back inside. Yuji says everything he is saying is just an excuse, and not one worth throwing his life away for. Yuji insists he would never say these things to his mother, but Junpei insists that people don't have hearts. If people did have hearts, they wouldn't have cursed him and his mother. Junpei is filled with hatred and doesn't know what's right or wrong. Teen Angst uses his Shikigami to attack. Yuji allows his stingers to pierce his body when Moondregs is suddenly dispelled. Yuji uses his words to console his friend and promises to take him to Jujutsu High, make him a skilled sorcerer, and promise to find the person that killed his mother. Right on time, Mahito comes down the school stairs and interrupts. Yuji doesn't recognize Mahito and hesitates when Mahito suddenly pins Yuji to the wall by reshaping his arm, and Yuji realizes it is the same curse Nanami warned him about. Yuji pleads with Junpei to run away regardless of how he knows Mahito. Junpei insists that Mahito isn't bad, but he realizes he was wrong all along. Mahito places his hand on Junpei's shoulder. Mahito whispers in his ears that he is foolish, and that's why he will die. The special grade curse uses idle transfiguration on Junpei and turns him into a transfigured human. He forces him to fight Yuji. 
Yuji doesn't know what to do and asks for Sukuna's help to heal Junpei, just like he healed his heart. But Sukuna denies him. Mahito is surprised, thinking that Sukuna would want to create a pact that's in his favor. But Mahito is unaware that Sukuna has already done so, and Yuji has lost memory of that event. Mahito wonders what will come next, and he and Sukuna share a sinister laughter that angers Yuji. Yuji realizes that these people are just curses. Junpei says, help me, as his transfigured body dies. Yuji dreams of having Junpei as his classmate, while Mahito laughs that Junpei died from being mutated so aggressively. An enraged Yuji delivers a powerful punch that smashes Mahito's face. The curse recovers, explaining that physical attacks don't work on him but his nose suddenly bleeds. Mahito realizes that two souls exist within Yuji's body, so he can naturally perceive the soul's contours. Yuji is filled with the negative energy of wrath and pain and says he will kill Mahito, to which the curse replies that he should say, exorcise instead. Yuji attacks Mahito, but he dodges it by changing the shape of his body. His goal is to fight with Yuji until he realizes that he can't win, making him rely on Sukuna and create a binding vow. They want to get Sukuna on their side. As they fight with each other, both Sorcerer and Curse deduce how they can kill each other. Yuji prepares to pound Mahito continuously so he can't recover, and Mahito changes his arms into blades. Mahito slashes through the building, causing Yuji to jump outside and fires a drill at him. Yuji catches the flesh but it grows spikes, injuring Yuji's hands. Yuji refuses to let go and throws Mahito to the ground. As they exchange blows at a close range, Mahito pierces Yuji's body with spikes from his own body. He attempts to touch Yuji's soul to make him switch with Sukuna. However, Sukuna takes this as an insult and warns Mahito that he should know his place. He will only forgive him once because they laughed together, but won't forgive him again. Back in reality, Yuji says he won't switch, but he will kill Mahito. He headbutts Mahito's face repeatedly and appears to have the upper hand. As Yuji is about to finish him, Mahito suddenly dashes behind Yuji and nearly takes his head off. But Nanami arrives in the nick of time and deflects Mahito's attack. Nanami says he'll lecture Yuji another time and asks for an update. Yuji reveals that he couldn't save two people, but Nanami is more worried about him. Yuji says he only has a few holes in his body so he's fine, and Nanami scoffs and says that clearly isn't fine. Nanami notices Mahito bleeding from his nose and asks how this happened. Yuji says, um, I punched him, making Nanami realize that Yuji is the key to this fight since his own attacks don't work on him. He also realizes that for some reason Mahito cannot touch Yuji's soul which means he won't be able to transfigure him. Together they can create openings for each other to fight and defeat the curse. Nanami tells Yuji that they must exorcise the curse here and now. He concludes that Mahito's idle transfiguration technique doesn't work on Yuji or that he can't kill Yuji yet, which is a good thing. He plans to exploit that hole to defeat Mahito. Nanami specifically tells Yuji that they're going for a wombo combo on Mahito which will halt Mahito's movements. Since his attacks are useless, they will have to rely on Yuji's blunt force. Mahito initiates the attack before Yuji and Nanami can start their charge, locking Nanami in combat, while sending transfigured humans to distract Yuji. When Mahito changed his form, Nanami and Yuji figured out his technique. They plan to strike Mahito during his transformation, delaying him without giving him the chance to transform again. Mahito tries to solo Nanami, thinking that Yuji will contemplate whether or not he should kill the transfigured humans, but Yuji resolves his dilemma faster than he thought. Nanami gets behind him while Yuji takes the front, giving Mahito an absolute beatdown and turning him into a cursed punching bag. However, Mahito performs a domain expansion, trapping Nanami inside and locking Yuji out of it. Within Mahito's domain, Nanami's basically screwed. He wasn't able to disable Mahito enough for Yuji to beat him up to a pulp, and now his enemy has surpassed his grade level by a large margin. Nanami is a grade 1 sorcerer but he could never advance any further to semi-special grade simply because he couldn't make his own domain expansion. He was just an ex-salaryman, whose only joy and comfort was to buy bread from a local bakery who has a cute cashier always waiting for him. After unlocking a core memory he went back to become a jujutsu sorcerer again, and now that his life is over, he has no regrets. But just as he's about to act cool in his death scene, Yuji breaks the domain from the outside giving Nanami a sliver of hope. Domain expansions specialize in trapping a person. The better the domain at keeping someone inside, the more vulnerable it is outside. Yuji also causes Mahito's domain to accidentally touch Sukuna's soul. Inside a domain, every strike is a guaranteed hit because it targets the person's soul. Since Yuji houses his soul as well as Sukuna's, 
the King of Curses is also affected by it. Sukuna warned Mahito that he could only touch his soul once, and that's when Yuji was catching strays from both of them after Mahito turned Junpei into a character development arc for Yuji. The evil and prideful curse punishes Mahito, injuring him severely and causing the domain to collapse. Yuji doesn't waste any time following up with another attack to finish him off. But Mahito turns into Nikocado Avocado, baiting Yuji to attack him with his divergent fist. However, Mahito was using that technique to distract Yuji, and he uses the opportunity to escape into the sewers. Nanami contacts one of the sorcerers in the sewers to notify them of Mahito's escape as he's trying to pursue him. But the exhaustion finally caught up with Yuji and he falls unconscious to the ground. A few hours later, Nanami comforts Yuji, especially after the fact that he had to kill people, transfigured people, who didn't deserve their fate. With his newfound resolve, Yuji meets up with Gojo and Nanami to become even stronger than before. Three days after the fight, Geto, Jogo and Mahito visit a remote hot spring in a province. Mahito acknowledges that they should be following Geto's plan, to trap Satoru Gojo inside the prison realm. With Yuji being a nuclear bomb for both the Jujutsu tech and their forces, Mahito wants to stick to the plan. Jogo agrees with this, especially after getting absolutely toppled by Gojo himself. As both curses experienced pain from the strongest modern-day Jujutsu sorcerer and the King of Curses, they don't want to deal with both of them head-on. Their current objective is to steal the six fingers of Sukuna from Jujutsu Tech and gather the rest of the fingers to offer to Sukuna in an attempt to recruit him to their cause. Geto is also aware that they can't be idling around, especially since he knows Gojo very well. The moment that they find another finger, he'll make sure that Yuji eats it right away. The hardest part is, there's a chance that Yuji may die, which will make it more difficult for them to hatch their plan. Sukuna is a threat to both of them, but recruiting him with the fingers they're going to offer will increase the chance that he will help them in one way or another. Back at Jujutsu Tech, Gojo plans for Yuji's comeback. Gojo wants him to calm down and follow the plan despite Yuji being ecstatic about his return to the land of the living. He's planning to make it a surprise because it's very, very rare to have a Jujutsu sorcerer come back to life after being pronounced dead for two whole months. Meanwhile, in the Tokyo school, Nobara and Megumi meet up with Panda, Toge and Maki to take part in the upcoming exchange event. A few seconds later, the Kyoto branch students finally arrive. Mai, Tudu, Momo, Mechamaru, Kamo and Miwa along with their teacher and advisor, Utahime. Gojo then arrives with a special package, Itadori Yuji completely alive and well. The Tokyo branch isn't really excited or happy at all. The Kyoto sister school students don't even look at Yuji, but his sudden return shocks the Kyoto branch principal the most, Principal Yoshinobu. He didn't expect Sukuna's vessel to just pop into the tournament unannounced, but with Yuji's return, Tokyo is finally even in terms of numbers with their sister school, Kyoto. Both schools will compete against each other by speedrunning their way to exercise as many cursed spirits as possible. The one with the most amount of exercise spirit wins. The Tokyo team already had a plan before Yuji showed up. So, with him around, it's going to ruin their rotation. But an extra man won't hurt, so Maki gives Yuji the task of holding off Todo, who is the strongest hand-to-hand -hand combatant from the Kyoto side. Todo is a free-spirited soul, and even the Kyoto branch has trouble keeping a leash on him. Yuji's exceptionally powerful in close quarter combat, so he'll be a good matchup. Meanwhile, Principal Yoshinobu briefs the Kyoto team and gives the students the task to eliminate Yuji for good. Basically, they're going to be gunning for Yuji's head, which is their primary objective. He reasons that Yuji isn't really a human, since he's just a vessel for Sukuna, a global threat to all Jujutsu sorcerers. He gives the task to Kamo Noritoshi, the leader of the Kyoto group, to make sure that they kill Yuji and pass it off as an accident. Todo leaves the room, stating that he doesn't want to participate in such folly. He is going to attend an idle handshake meetup later with Takada-chan and he's running out of time. Kamo tells everyone they will all attack Yuji at once and the rest can be sorted out later. Meanwhile, in the observation area, Gojo reveals that there's someone from Jujutsu Tech who is a traitor and is working for their enemy, feeding them bits of information. He wants Utahime to investigate on the Kyoto school side to sniff and root out the traitor amongst their ranks. After sorting out their plan, the Tokyo team led by Maki starts their mission. Gojo sends off the signal, and both school teams proceed with their hunt. Todo ambushes them, urging them to come at him as a group. But since it's Yuji's goal to keep him at bay, Yuji immediately charges forward, giving Todo a warm and wonderful knee kick right in the head. The rest of the Tokyo group heads for their next target. They don't realize that there's a sorcerer in the air, Momo, who is monitoring and relaying their movements to her teammates. 
Yuji's initial blows landed well on Todo, but he is one tough mamajama. Todo returns the favor, sending a solid right jab at Yuji, causing him to fly a few meters away. Before he can even recover, Todo rushes at him and starts kicking and punching him down. After a couple of hits, Yuji is basically done and Todo looks for his next target. But Yuji stands up and prepares for a second round. Before they fight, Todo asks him what kind of woman is his type. This catches Yuji by surprise. He didn't expect to be answering a question about his preferences for women. He answers that he likes tall women with big butts, like Jennifer Lawrence. Yuji's answer sends Todo from the realm of reality into a slice of life anime, imagining an alternate universe together with Yuji as sworn brothers and best of friends. Todo realizes that for the first time ever, he has met someone with the same taste in women as him, and he finds a newfound respect for Yuji, calling him his best friend. However, things get a little tough for Yuji when the Kyoto students ambush him, forcing him to retreat. The Kyoto students have him surrounded, but Todo interferes and reminds them that they shouldn't meddle with his business. Seeing that they might be fighting against Todo, the rest of the students proceed with Plan B. This is exactly what the Tokyo students wanted. They disable Momo, and Mai and Miwa split with the main group to help their teammate. Maki intercepts them and fights against Miwa, while Megumi stops Kamo. A few minutes later, Megumi's demon dog senses hostility from the Kyoto students, and he theorizes that they might be after Yuji, so they immediately head to where Yuji is. Yuji and Todo continue to fight each other, exchanging blow after blow. Despite Todo's physique and huge stature, he's still on par with Yuji's speed, forcing Yuji to trade blows with him. Todo appreciates Yuji's fighting prowess, unlike the rest of the Kyoto students and Todo measures that Yuji's raw strength is better than his. However, he can't help but feel wronged by Yuji's so-called technique. The lag between the raw power and the cursed energy flow makes the attack useless against people like him. He wants Yuji to excel, so he and Yuji can stay best friends. Todo asks Yuji if he wants to stay weak, and Yuji's eyes light up because he can't stay weak forever. He has to be stronger than before. Todo decides to coach Yuji. He informs Yuji that his technique is very efficient for most common foes and sorcerers alike, but on higher grade curses like Mahito, it won't do as much. He asks Yuji what he'll do about it, and starts lecturing him about the cursed energy flow theory. Apparently many sorcerers channel their cursed energy consciously, which comes from the navel going to the rest of the body where they want the cursed energy to flow, like their fists or their legs and feet. But this theory of channeling cursed energy is wrong. Separating the cursed energy by parts is what makes the lag for Yuji's cursed energy power. Todo offers this knowledge to Yuji, and gives him a new perception of how to properly asses and control his cursed energy. His understanding of the cursed energy flow in the human body allows Yuji to gain new insight on how to properly use his power without the drawback or the delay. Yuji is finally ready to fight after his lecture with Professor Todo. With Yuji having an epiphany, he can finally go all out and reveal his true strength. Meanwhile, Nobara and Panda confront Momo, forcing her to submit to them before they beat her up. But Mechamaru snipes one of Panda's hearts, subduing one of his three forms. Panda then squares off against Mechamaru, who then uses a rocket punch straight out of Pacific Rim to initiate the fight. Panda takes on Mechamaru's high-energy ultra cannon beam and starts going goblin mode, sending a flurry of punches and lunge attacks that even Mechamaru can't follow. Panda deduces that Mechamaru isn't like him, a cursed corpse. Instead, Mechamaru is a sorcerer controlling a puppet from somewhere else. Panda is right. Mechamaru admits that he's indeed a sorcerer specializing in puppet control, unlike Panda, who sounds like a puppet that acts independently. He reveals that he was born without a right arm and a lower torso. His skin is also very, very fragile and even moonlight burns him. However, with that insane drawback comes insane powers. Something called a heavenly pact is a type of pact that someone can't offer to you. Instead, from the moment he was born, he was given the worst possible body build in exchange for an absurd amount of cursed energy and the ability to control puppets over long distances. But seeing Panda makes him miserable because unlike him, Panda can do whatever he wants with his body and that frustrates him. Because you know, he's disabled. Mechamaru charges up and fires his ultimate move, which Panda blocks with ease. Panda then transforms into one of his cursed forms, Harambe, or rather, Gorilla. A few years ago, Principal Yaga merged Panda's core with his older brother and sister. Panda is his ultimate masterpiece, due to the fact that he managed to create a cursed corpse capable of housing three core pieces. After switching to gorilla mode, Panda begins beating up Mechamaru, 
sending him flying a couple of meters away from the forest and into one of the school buildings. Panda knows he has the upper hand and uses his ability as the better close-range fighter to chase and force Mechamaru to keep up with him. Panda bluffs where his core is, and Mechamaru falls for it and proceeds to finish him off, which didn't actually happen since he capped. Panda then rips off Mechamaru's arm, finally disabling him for good. On the other side of the map, Miwa apologizes to Maki for participating in Yuji's assassination. She doesn't want to kill Yuji, but given that she's poor as hell, she has no choice but to participate. She wants to advance to the next grade, so her salary grade will increase as well. Maki is angry at this and beats her up and steals her sword. Meanwhile, Nobara and Momo fight against each other. These Zenin fangirls are fighting not for themselves, but for one of the twins. Nobara for Maki and Momo for Mai. Momo blasts wind while dodging Nobara's attacks, and Nobara fires her nails, which Momo easily dodges. Momo rambles about why she supports Mai, giving insight into the Zenin family power structure, where women are expected to do well as a jujutsu sorcerer or else they're just trash to be thrown away. But Nobara has had enough of the backstory and pulls her nails she scattered all over the forest. Throwing her nails randomly was just a part of the plan as she sets up the perfect counter-attack for a flying enemy. Nobara disables Momo's broom and proceeds to attack Momo with a toy hammer, but Mai shoots her, knocking Nobara down. Mai orders Momo to retreat, but things get a bit interesting when Maki arrives to face off against her little sister. Mai and Maki are twins from the Zenin clan, one of the three major clans of the Jujutsu society. These three clans are the foundation on which the Jujutsu world rests. Without these major clans, curses will run rampant and will cause the end of humanity. However, the Zenin clan in particular is very strict and only sees people as sorcerers or rejects. A few years ago, the twins were born and they see it as a terrible omen. Maki can't see curses, so she's not aware of their presence. Mai can, but she's always afraid to get near them, let alone see them. The Zenin clan expects them to do better, but Maki was born without a single trace of cursed energy. A few more years later, Maki decides to go off on her own, leaving the Zenin clan behind with the goal of becoming a Jujutsu sorcerer. She swore to the clan head that once she returns, she'll be the Zenin clan head. The current Zenin head told her he'll subject her to trials befitting of one, including Mai. In the present, Mai fires at Maki but continues to miss. Maki finally charges forward, knowing that Mai fired the last bullet. However, Mai casts her cursed technique, firing a bullet created out of nothing to eliminate Maki. But Maki turns into Neo from the Matrix and catches it in mid-air. Frustrated, Mai fights off against Maki in hand-to-pistol combat, but Maki comes out on top. Mai lashes out at Maki's decision to leave the clan. She resented Maki for her decisions. Mai was comfortable with being at the bottom, so long as Maki was there with her. But Maki's decision leads Mai to try and keep up with her older sister, so as to please the Zenin clan, despite being thoroughly afraid of curses. Maki being born with no cursed energy allowed her to focus and hone her physical prowess, enough to keep up with Jujutsu sorcerers who wield cursed energy. But Mai can only do so much with her cursed energy. So Maki has the upper hand and this talent was the reason why she can't go up in the sorcerer grades. The Zenin refuse to acknowledge Maki's talent and Mai, who has none at all, hates that. She hates the fact that she believes Maki won't let go of her and won't leave her behind. Maki tells her that the reason why she can't stay at the bottom with her is because she would have hated herself and she can't allow that. At the Tokyo Central Grounds, Megumi is engaged in combat against Noritoshi, who is both an archer and a cursed blood user. Megumi keeps running away from him, and Kamo keeps him on the defensive while firing blood-infused arrows. Both students come from one of the major clans. Megumi comes from the Zenin clan, blessed with the prize Ten Shadows, the ability to summon Shikigamis at will. Noritoshi comes from the Kamo clan, which prides itself on the cursed blood techniques. Each of these clans is a major powerhouse in Jujutsu society and they're both capable fighters. After cornering Megumi, Kamo throws a left hook, pushing Megumi a few meters away and his arms tremble from the impact. Kamo uses his cursed blood technique and dopes himself to the point that he's physically faster than Megumi and he is barely able to keep up. Meanwhile, Toge continues his mission to exercise as many curses as he can while the rest of the group is engaged in combat. But he stumbles upon an ominous threat Principal Yoshinobu had prepared a semi-special grade for them to use against Yuji, but a special grade curse appears, which quickly eliminated the semi-special grade curse in one shot. Unknown to the rest of the students and the Jujutsu staff, Geto's plans are already in motion. Mahito and a bald dude prepare for an assault to retrieve Sukuna's fingers. Elsewhere, Kamo reveals to Megumi that he wants to kill Yuji because it is the right call, and also because he wants to become the head of the three major clans for his mother's sake. 
He states that Megumi and him are similar but Megumi refuses to acknowledge this. He tells Kamo that he's saving people according to his good conscience, and if Kamo refuses to acknowledge this, he'll have no choice but to fight him. Megumi summons Max Elephant into the fight. The Shikigami summons water to drench the entire hallway preventing Kamo from moving. He then follows up with Nue's lightning attack shocking Kamo's body, but Kamo counterattacks by binding Nue in his cursed blood. While Megumi and Kamo trade blows, suddenly large wooden tendrils appear from the other side. Toge tells them to run away and so the duo runs as fast as they can. However, the tendrils have them cornered. Outside the forest, the bald dude summons a veil covering the entire school. Gojo, Utahimi and Principal Yoshinobu arrive at the veil's wall, and Gojo deduces that it's only keeping him outside. Utahimi and the principal are able to freely walk in and out. Gojo orders both of them to intercept whoever's inside while he finds a way to break the veil from the outside. Baldi then challenges them to a fight, and Principal Yoshinobu takes his lead guitar out to do who knows what while instructing Utahime to save the students. Inside the veil, the source of all the wooden tendrils finally shows itself, a special grade curse. Megumi tries to call Gojo, but the curse destroys his smartphone, intending to cut off all contact with him. Toj quickly stops the special grade curse with cursed speech, and Kamo follows up with his cursed blood technique, but it doesn't do any damage. Megumi also attacks the curse with Nue, but he also isn't able to harm it. After taking their attacks, the curse tells them to stop attacking her as she merely wants to protect the planet, demanding them to die and become sages, you know, like the ingredient. The special grade cursed spirit launches an attack on the school participants, catching the cursed blood sorcerer Noritoshi, the cursed speech user Toge, and the ten shadow sorcerer Megumi by surprise. Jujutsu Tech is supposed to keep out cursed spirits, but the sudden arrival of a boss-level cursed spirit is something that the group didn't expect. With their communication cut off from the rest of the group, the trio will have to defeat this special grade on their own. Despite him being proficient in closed quarters combat, Noritoshi has no choice but to lure the special grade outside after attacking it with his piercing blood technique, but barely damages it. After getting outside, Megumi summons his flying Shikigami, Nu, to attack the spirit, but it effortlessly pierces the bird. Toge is at his limit, coughing up blood, after exhausting his throat, due to his cursed speech. They're outmatched, and are on the defensive. Megumi is about to unleash his greatest Shikigami, but Toge stops him, opting to use his cursed speech, to blast the spirit away. But it didn't really do much. The spirit is still alive, barely damaged from the sonic blast. Maki tries to sneak attack, but doesn't do any damage, as the spirit just breaks her sword. So she uses the cursed tool, Playful Cloud, to send the cursed spirit flying. Megumi follows up with his demon dog, tackling the cursed spirit on their own. But they barely did anything. What's even worse, is that the cursed spirit attacked, and gave them cursed spores, which feed on cursed energy. Maki tries to fight the spirit, but she's outmatched. Megumi is about to unleash his strongest technique for the second time, but Maki stops him, telling him he doesn't need to do anything anymore. A few seconds later, the new best friends, Todu and Yuji, arrive to deal with the cursed spirit. Panda arrives as well, and takes both Megumi and Maki away from the scene. Todu says he isn't going to help Yuji. He wants Yuji to land a black flash, a special move that can only be performed by exceptionally talented jujitsu sorcerers that delivers almost three times the maximum damage a normie can do. But before Yuji fights the spirit, he asks her if she's allied with Mahito, the one responsible for his friend's death. The spirit tells him she is, and Yuji goes rage mode and starts throwing punches, but he isn't able to land a black flash successfully. Todu slaps him for his failure and tells him that he can't use his rage and anger half-heartedly because those emotions are an important resource for sorcerers. He reminds Yuji to remove his anger and rage, and to start over. With that quick lesson, Yuji is ready for the second round. Yuji focuses immensely, and as the spirit attacks, Yuji follows suit, delivering a nasty surprise for the spirit. The Black Flash is a faster than light attack that only a select few can do, and thanks to Tadu's lessons, Yuji finally knows how to activate the attack properly putting him in what Nanami calls, the zone. Todu can now fight on equal footing with Yuji, which is the reason why he was trying to train him in the first place. The spirit realizes how dangerous Todu and Yuji are together, so she removes her protective clothing, 
revealing her arm with a huge flower. She unleashes a flurry of attacks, and attacks them mid-air. But the combined power of Todo and Yuji is undefeated. Despite working together for the first time, their teamwork is excellent. After regaining their composure, the duo is ready to fight the second round. Todo analyzes their battle strategy, remembering all of the moves that the Cursed Spirit has used so far. He assesses that they can defeat it with Yuji, and Todo, with his 530,000 IQ, announces that he'll be using his secret technique, telling Yuji to keep attacking and trust the process. But the plan crumbles. As soon as Todo charges with Yuji, he gets trapped by a vine, dragged midair, and flung several meters away by the spirit. But just before he gets impaled by wooden spikes, Todo swaps with the spirit, impaling her instead of him, using the spirit's own technique. Todo finally reveals his technique, he can swap with his opponent's body, making their attacks backfire on them. Before the spirit can get used to the attack, Yuji and Todo go ham on the spirit, making it one of the most satisfying wombo combos, second only to Yuji and Nanami beating the hell out of Mahito. The spirit gets clapped, literally, and gets beat down. However, after a few minutes of fighting, the spirit gets used to their fighting style. She's able to fight on equal footing, while pre-throwing her own attacks before the swap happens. The fight turns in her favor, and she summons a giant flower, with deadly curses that feeds on cursed energy. The giant flower sends its cursed attack, and Todo swaps Yuji with the cursed spirit, causing the attack to backfire on the cursed spirit. He tries to counter the attack, he uses his cursed energy to shield himself, but dispels it, since he realized it feeds on cursed energy. Once the attack is over, Yuji and Todo attack her again, but this time, Todo swaps Yuji for Maki's weapon, confusing Yuji, and hitting the spirit with it. With the damage that she sustained during the fight, the spirit drains the energy from the surrounding plants, causing her cursed energy to spike, regaining her health back. After getting her energy back, she tries casting a domain expansion, but the anti-Gojo veil has been broken by Gojo, which interrupts the cursed spirit's chanting process. With the veil finally broken, Gojo decides who is he going to go after first. After seeing Yuji's growth, he immediately goes after the bald dude that wants to make a coat rack out of his bones. Gojo quickly eliminates him, and he casts Hollow Purple, severely injuring the special grade Cursed Spirit. However, the attack at Jujutsu's tech is actually just a diversion. Elsewhere, one of Ghetto's partners, Mahito, managed to successfully retrieve all of Sukuna's fingers, which was their objective all along, nabbing several Cursed Spirits along with them. Ghetto tells everyone to lay low for the time being, because in a couple of months, on October 31st, they're going to use everything they have to seal Satoru Gojo for good. Back at the high school, they regroup to discuss what happened and assess their situation. The barrier used by the entity called Tengen-sama was easily broken in by the enemy force, which made Gojo think about the enemy's plans. But that doesn't matter for the time being, and Gojo decides that they should resume the exchange event. He wants the students to enjoy and makes it a baseball game instead. A few days later, the first years, Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara are briefed by their mission handler, Nida, on the way to their target location. There were four simultaneous murders that happened, and the way the victims died is bizarre. However, one of their leads died, and they arrived as the family's already holding a funeral. With their current lead dead, the group goes to the victim's school to investigate and dig deeper into the matter. Once they arrive, two delinquents bow in respect to Megumi, who was a problem kid back in 8th grade. One of the workers of the school recognizes him, so the group starts asking questions, without giving away the existence of curses. They tell the tale of the Yasohachi Bridge, which according to Megumi, is a very popular suicide spot. One of the students says that the bridge is a spot for bungee jumping, which is also some sort of a test of courage, a rite performed by Japanese high school students. That night, the group arrives at Yasohachi Bridge, they investigate the bridge, staying overnight, but didn't find anything unusual. But the next day, one of the boys they met yesterday, brings a girl with him, whom Megumi recognizes. Fujinuma, one of Megumi's upperclassmen, reveals that she too, went to the bridge to do the test of courage a couple of years ago, and since then, she has felt something strange coming from their family business shop, two weeks after the test of courage. Megumi thinks it might be related to the bridge, but tell them not to worry about it, because there's definitely nothing for them to be afraid of. 
There's still time for them to save whoever joined the test of courage. Fujinuma mentions that Megumi's older sister, Tsumiki, also did the test of courage, and Megumi pieces together that his sister was cursed. Something cursed Tsumiki back in 8th grade, and she's been bedridden ever since. The reason that Megumi joined Jujitsu Tech in the first place is to find a cure for his ill sister and find out the root of the curse on Tsumiki. Megumi can't think for a whole minute, and Yuji steps in to snap him out of his dilemma. Megumi calls assistant Ichiji to ask for additional guards for Tsumiki, and he tells him that they're short-staffed. Gojo isn't around to do all of the heavy lifting until next week, so Megumi decides that they're going after the bridge, whatever happens, they'll just wing it. After learning that Fujinuma didn't go for the test of courage, but did a separate one under the bridge, Megumi ventures alone to investigate the curse for himself, sending both Nobara and Yuji home. But his two classmates follow him regardless, and Megumi finally reveals the truth about his sister, and says she is still bedridden. After some investigation and planning, the group crosses the domain, finally entering the lair of the curses. Yuji tells both Nobara and Megumi to deal with the whack-a-mole curse, while he's going to fight against the Green Goblin. Yuji attacks the Green Curse, sending a flurry of punches and kicks. The curse fights Yuji in hand-to-hand -hand combat, while Nobara and Megumi fight the arcade game. But someone kidnaps Nobara again, just like what happened in the detention center. But this time, Yuji follows her, while Megumi stays in the lair, to fight against the curse they haven't exorcised yet. Outside, a bootleg Jojo character appears, and apologizes for pulling her. He offers Nobara the chance to run away, but Nobara doesn't want to escape, and wants to find out what they're after. The curse reveals that they're going to retrieve one of Sukuna's fingers, which is inside the domain. After exorcising every cursed mole, something unexpected happens. The same special grade cursed spirit that almost killed Yuji appears. This time, he doesn't have a backup. He realizes it as soon as the cursed spirit appears, and its appearance attracted other cursed spirits, simply because it has Sukuna's finger. The fight starts, and there is a huge difference in power, and Megumi gets wrecked. When the spirit lands a hit on Megumi, he gets a flashback of Gojo beating him. After Yuji's sudden growth in strength and power, he sought Gojo's help to train him. During one of their trainings, Gojo told him something important. He said that Megumi keeps downplaying his potential, like how he did with baseball. But unlike baseball, fighting against curses is a different type of sport. It's an individual sport that relies heavily on the sorcerer's ability to fight on his own and stand their ground. Individuality is the most important thing as a sorcerer, and he won't get so far by playing it safe in groups. He realizes his mistake, and Megumi wakes up and forces himself to imagine a stronger version of himself. He summons an incomplete domain, and he and his Shikigami fight against the special grade on his own. Once the Shikigami dispels the domain, the evolved demon dog kills the curse, revealing the finger of Sukuna as a prize. The fight exhausts him and he falls unconscious on the ground. Meanwhile, Nobara and Yuji fight against the curses who call themselves brothers. The fight is extremely dangerous for them both, except for Yuji, so he warns Nobara and they go on the defensive to flee from the curse user. Nobara trips and falls down, so Yuji picks her up and starts running as fast as he can, deeper into the woods and towards a mountainside road. However, the cursed users manage to catch up to them and infects them both with their blood. According to one of the cursed users, his blood is poisonous and it will melt their bodies as they writhe in pain. However, this is exactly why it is a bad matchup for them. Thanks to Nobara's long-range ability, she is able to hurt both users by piercing her wrists with her cursed nails. Yuji is Sukuna's vessel, so he's also immune to poison. Yuji begins throwing punches and beating one of the two brothers, switching with Nobara so she can finish the wounded brother. Yuji starts fighting against the other curse user, ending the fight together with Nobara by using a simultaneous black flash. With one of the brothers defeated, the other brother goes after him to retrieve his brother's corpse. A civilian truck appears, and the brother takes it hostage, but Yuji closely follows him, signaling Nobara to weaken the brother, and Yuji delivers a devastating final blow. As soon as the fight's over, Yuji reunites with Megumi, who is lying unconscious on the ground. Megumi gives him the finger of Sukuna, but Sukuna's mouth eats it as soon as it's within his grasp, and they are shocked. A few days later, 
Gojo talks on the phone and says that the first years each defeated a special grade. And later that day, to do and may request for Maki, Panda, Nobara, Megumi, and to do's brother, Yuji Itadori, to be promoted to first grade sorcerers. And that brings us to the end of season one of Jujutsu Kaisen. If you want to find out what happens next, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Panorama Anime, and comment for the next episode.